What in the world is going on, everybody? <clears throat> it is January 17th, 2012, not 2011. Like I said last week, unfortunately. That was interesting. All right. It is the Losers Bracket. Back again. Video show now. Pretty excited. Here with the normal co-hosts. I do have Asylum with me. I do have Kurt. I do have Jerry as well with their beautiful pictures that they let us have again this week. Guys, want to know how you're doing? We've got some great guests tonight. We have Guitar Hero Eric, the man who runs the social media for Guitar Hero. We have Lantastic Gaming. We have the Hype Festation 2 crew coming on later on in the show. We're going to be talking Sopa and Pipa. It's going to be a packed show to say the least. Uh, Asylum, look at you over there. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. It's been a it's been an interesting week. Getting back still in the full on swing of things. Getting ZVV caught back up. Getting us and pushing us ahead into 2012. It's going to be real interesting to see what uh what we have in store for us today. I'm uh, I'm really excited. Well, Kurt, how about you, sir? How are you doing? <laughs> it's been an interesting week, man. It's been an interesting week. We did the uh, you know the uh, the COD thing last night. Me and Jerry, the COD little panel. It was. It was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, we can you know talk a little bit about some of that stuff tonight, and I'm sure we will. Pretty excited for that. And uh, I think Jerry's in prime form tonight. Uh, it's one of those days I said, I'm glad I'm not on VVV, because I'm telling you, he's ripping into you guys today. Woo! Yeah. Holy Jerry, on, shit, it's like a fucking clown college. You give some people a week off, and they come back together all rattled, but nothing makes me happier than shitting on people. And I'm in a shitting on people mood. I had to be nice all goddamn last night on that ESFI show, which it was a fucking shame how few people from the fucking Call of Duty community retweeted and promoted a show that was about their goddamn fucking community. Fuck them. I'll support them despite their stupidity. And I mean that in a kind and loving way, of course, as we start this wow. new loser bracket. So, Jason, who is our yeah, first dude. guest tonight? Oh, oh my God. I don't even know if I feel like... Uh... <laughs> Do we want to subject anybody to Hero this? nice guy mask on, I promise. Hold on. <laughs> we should talk about Guitar Hero. Do you, do you want to? I don't know. This is, uh, this is almost scary. I'm kind of... <laughs> it is, I know. No, I want to hear what's going on with Rhythm Gaming. I mean, I think it's really interesting as as that, as that you were just at a tournament. Right? Mm, yeah, I mean, we've got some good news things that like what's going on in the community. So let's see if we can get him into the call. Let's see. Hmm. Guitar Hero Eric is going to be the first guest. And I need to enter. And while Jason's doing that, and I know you don't want to hear him babble his technical things, <laughs> I want to see how all of you are doing out there in Streamland. And matter of fact, if you're in the stream right now, retweet the show because I want to have a big audience. Right, because I got some things to say, some things to rant about. It's the second show of the year. Kim Rahm is going to come up next week. So we've got a lot of stuff going on tonight. We're going to find out about Lantastic Gaming and what the crew there is trying to do. If we have enough, enough time, I want to talk a little bit about SOPA, right? The Stop the Piracy Act and PIPA, the Intellectual Property Act, why it's important, why you're seeing a lot about it. And if you don't know anything about it, want to give you a little bit of education and talk a little bit about what the good people at the ECA are doing. Uh, And it's a good thing they're around and it's a good thing a lot of competitive gamers know about them. So we're going to cover that tonight, too. While we're doing that, Jason, how are you doing on Guitar Hero? I am adding his phone number to the call right now, actually. Awesome. So, yeah, so... Uh, I think we uh, we this 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 particular show. We also want to cover the esports survey we did. I made a bunch mm-hmm. of graphs on our website for those who don't know. It's right above our shout box. It says something like Lord Jareth survey results crap. It's also on our homepage. There's a big um, in the rotating banner. You can get a link there also. We got about 400 respondents to that survey and. Uh, It was interesting what we found out. Maybe not so much everything surprising, but Call of Duty seems really popular. It's both a game everybody's familiar with and plays, and it is the game that topped the list of games that people most wanted more quality content for, which which speaks both to uh, the potential, which I talked about last night on the ESFI show about Call of Duty, and also some of its struggle. So, Jason, are you set? Uh, yes. Uh-oh, he's, he doesn't <laughs> give us that 
<laughs> that wasn't a very assuring yes there, Paradise. <laughs> well, you're making, you're making me a little nervous here. Minutes, we, can get, we can probably go over like small news topics. You know, that won't take up much time if you want. Oh, go right can... ahead, Kurt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cover? Um, see, I mean, I mean, I suppose we can talk about a few things. I mean, I want to mention a personal news topic. You know, nothing really major, but I want to mention something personal. Uh, you know, we had. Uh, Two of our Check Six guys over at uh, the UCSD Winter Game Fest 2012. It's uh, it's a so- it's a SoCal LAN event. Nothing major, but there's you know it was actually really surprising. I was really surprised by the event. Um, they put on a really good show, really pretty decent produced streamed uh, streamed StarCraft and at League of Legends matches. A uh, ton of big sponsors. Anyway, uh, X- Check Six Mystic took second in that, and then Check Six This Is Jimmy took fourth in that, losing to uh, Gosu. Uh, bubbles uh, in first place. So Ghost of Bubbles got first place, but uh, you know Mystic walked home with a pretty nice Alienware laptop uh, and um, you know a fifty dollar prize. So uh, I think he's pretty happy. And uh, you know Jimmy walked away with I think uh, a graphics card or something like that too. So pretty good stuff. I advise everybody to go check those those guys out because they really put on some amazing stuff. And the SoCal land scene is actually doing really really well lately. Um, so if you go to like SC Tech. Community, so it's sctechcomm.org. You go to that site and check it out. Uh, I think they do like once a year or once every six months tournaments for SoCal. So support those guys. Then they had, uh, I mean, they had Call of Duty, they had Super Smash Brothers, they had Halo Combat, they had, uh, you know, LOL, you know, some, some, of course, bigger than others, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, we got IEM Kiev coming up. Uh, Jason, Jason, are we ready for our, the caller? Just about to be, just about to be. Okay, well, let's, well, let's well, guess we can go ahead and talk about IM Kiev. So we got we have IM Kiev coming up, um, for uh, which for for Intel Extreme Masters. Uh, I know we have you know we got quite a few things in there. Of course, we have Counter Strike. I will have to mention that, but I suppose we can start with League of Legends a little bit to cover that a little bit. And who's who is attending and all that good stuff. Paradise, do you want to take that away? No, I don't think he does. I think I want to take it away. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're not important to me, so I completely forgot oh, your name. No, I'm joking. That, that, wow. That hurts, me, really, <laughs> that hurts, go, go ahead that hurts right life. somewhere over here. I, I love you. I do. I really do. Go ahead. But, um, you know, I was surprised. They, uh, we actually have a new Ukrainian team coming out, White Lotus. I haven't heard too much of them, but uh, I think they're seated second right now. Which on the European ladders, which I think is really interesting, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Uh, looking at the groups, the groups are going to be really interesting. Uh, leading off the first matches, we have we have Solo Mid and Curse, which I'm not a hundred percent keen on having American teams go against each other. I, I'd like it more U.S. versus EU, or like EU versus another EU, because I don't like seeing U.S. teams getting taken out right away. But uh, a real interesting lineup. Uh, from Europe, we have uh, SK Gaming White Lotus. Against All Odds is finally back in the scene, which I'm really happy to see. Uh, then Team Cypher, the yeah. punch team. They haven't then, done much of anything since uh, Season 1, right? Right, and that was right around DreamHack. The first DreamHack is when uh, they were starting to yeah. come back up, and then they kind of disappeared for a while, and now they're back. And then we have uh, Moscow 5, a Russian team, actually making it which I found is to be pretty interesting. I didn't think the Russians were quite up to par yet as far as competitive play, but I guess Moscow 5 is. But uh, what are your thoughts on uh, these brackets here, Kurt? Um, really interesting story, man. Uh, you know, I suppose really the interesting story is not necessarily who's going, because I think that's not necessarily anyone too surprising other than maybe White Lotus. Um, which I guess would be surprising to people that don't know it. Like maybe, you know, maybe me, I'm just not familiar with the Ukrainian scene. To me, what's more interesting is the story, and we didn't have it. I don't think we covered this, and unfortunately, it's really unfortunate. I don't think we covered the fact that the per- people that actually won one of the IEM Kiev qualifiers was Team Goose, which, if I'm not mistaken, that team pretty much came out of nowhere. <laughs> Picture of a goose um, formerly Blight Gaming. Uh, were they really poor guys? Oh, yes, God. they used to be blind. Eventually, eventually, I will have to do my Jerry rant on on blind gaming, and I'm, I I will be more than happy to do that very very soon because I have no shame in doing that. But anybody, stay away. But anyway, uh, 
uh, uh, but no, Goose, you know, sort of came out of nowhere, and they destroyed, uh, what was it, CLG and TSM uh, for that IEM Kev qualifier mm-hmm. to place first in that Kev qualifier. Unfortunately, they don't have a sponsor, um, so they did have to drop out and allow Curse to go, um, which yep. I think is really the more interesting story, but, you know, that was a few weeks ago. So, And but, now, um, with Curse Gaming, Nijacky can't make it to Kiev. Really? Wow. His visa didn't clear, so they're not letting him leave the country. Wow, he's listed on the LOL side. I thought he was going to be able to go. That's that's awful. So do, do we know he's going to replace him yet? Nope, no idea. Even on the Reina Gaming uh, blog posts and on the League of Legends forums, they have no idea who they're going to replace him with. So it's going to be real wow. interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of sad then because that means it's kind of a SK Gaming walkover. <laughs> you know, I mean, TSM might put up a fight, but uh, I've never... I've never been one of those two uh, keen on on uh, TSM guys. I, you know me. <laughs> you know, even though they're U.S., I often think they're going to lose because you know, they, they're just a little bit too hyped up for me. But definitely. Anyway, I, but, think, uh, I think we're ready to bring in the uh, the mm-hmm. caller though. And, you know, we, if we want, we can get back to IEM later. But I know we want to go ahead and take care of this interview. So, Jason, if you're ready, sure. let's get on in. Yeah, let's get uh, Jerry to add him into the call. And then we'll start talking a little bit of, uh, well, this will probably be one of my favorite topics that we've done to date, Guitar Hero. I mean, hey, I don't think we've ever actually had a full Guitar Hero-based interview on the show, have we? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I know we had Annie Ecstasy Leung back on episode 17 way back in the day, but uh, that was more about some drama that was going on in the world of competitive gaming at that point. So, I mean, I've I've been paying attention, you know quite a bit to the show for a long mm-hmm. time and I don't remember it. <gasps> there we go. Look at that. It's ringing. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> Let's prank call him. Hey, is Eric. Eric, what's going on, buddy? This is Jason VV Paradise. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm <laughs> doing great. Thanks for calling in. Dude, hey, I really appreciate you taking some time out. Just so uh, everyone knows, he is actually on his vacation here in Orlando. He's about 15 minutes down the road from where I am right now. And uh, he's taking some time out tonight to call in so he can be on the show. Uh, Eric, first of all, let me introduce you to my co-host since, obviously, we met last week. But uh, I'm joined by Christian, also of EV Asylum. He's the vice president of EV Gaming. Christian, say hello to Eric. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Great. Hi, Christian. All right. We also are joined by Kurt Keyhunt Carter. He actually is a manager over at Check Six Gaming, another competitive gaming organization. Kurt, Eric. Eric. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you, but hopefully we can have some good topics. <laughs> hey, Kurt. And last but definitely not least, we have the owner slash president of VVV Gaming, Jerry Lord Jareth Prohaska. Jerry, Eric. Eric, nice to meet you. Welcome to the Losers Bracket. Thanks, Jerry. All right. So just so everyone knows that's tuning in, that isn't necessarily sure who exactly you are joining us on the show tonight, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in the uh, Guitar Hero world. Oh, yeah, well, first of all, I am, uh, I'm never on vacation. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm playing Guitar Hero at the Disney Quest downtown right now. Uh, oh, wow. There's five machines here. It's great. In the arcade. <laughs> Loving it. But I do social media for Activision's uh, Guitar Hero, Hero Brands, also DJ Hero and, Brand, and Band Hero. That's too neat. Too neat. So I actually got the chance to come up and see the first of the Guitar Hero tournaments that's going on right now that uh, we just heard was announced through uh, the Hero feed. And, you know, we saw this at MAGFest, and we've got another one coming up at Rockage in San Jose. Can you tell us a little bit about what these upcoming events are, what the purpose of them is, and, uh, you know, what are we going to see coming up in the future? Okay, uh, yeah. The MAGFest was the first of the uh, GHCOM uh, Guitar Hero tournaments, and uh, we, haven't, we haven't done any uh, in a bit, and we just wanted, wanted to start doing them again. Uh, as you guys know, Guitar Hero is a, cool, a really cool social party game, and you guys are all on the uh, competitive side of things. Uh, we wanted to start doing some more uh, tournaments, keep it going, and uh, yeah, MAGFest was great. It was great. You definitely kicked butt there, uh, Jason. That was great. It's good meeting you. Uh, and Thank then, you. Uh, next next month, we're, yeah, next month we're doing it in San Jose at Rockage, and that'll be on the 11th is the Guitar Hero tournament, and the 12th of February is the DJ Hero tournament, and then uh, oh, cool. yeah, we might might do some more, trying to get some more going in March and then April and and so on and so forth. Just trying to uh, keep the uh, competitive side going, and again keep people into playing Guitar Hero because we know they, a lot of people are still playing, but there hasn't been any organized uh, official ones that 
least that I know about lately. So. Yeah, very, very, very true. Um, okay, can you tell us maybe a little bit more about yourself, the man behind the uh, Guitar Hero social media, you know, uh, how you got into this position before we uh, get into a little bit more of the depth of, uh, you know, what the plans are for the future? Uh, I mean, just real brief. I, I like video games. I like Guitar Hero. I played ever since I was in high school slash college, and uh, I've been doing video game PR for about 12 years. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, it's, I got lucky. How about that? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> that's probably about good you would be, good, you'd be surprised how many You'd be surprised how many times we hear that answer, too. <laughs> it's true. You ask somebody how they got in the gaming industry, it's like, one, number one's hard work, number two is luck. <laughs> you know? So... <laughs> And definitely. Yeah. Um, do you know what the plans are possibly for Rockage? Are we just going to see just another Guitar Hero tournament? What exactly is Rockage so the people that are listening know? Oh, uh, well, for those that don't know, MAGFest was last month, and that was Music and Gaming Festival that uh, is their 10th year, and that's on in Maryland. And now Rockage is in San Jose. It's another music and gaming uh, two-day festival of that uh, with some chiptune, uh, chiptune artists, some bands, uh, classic arcade gaming, and uh, some tournaments, so it's it's a music and gaming festival, and it, but it's the first one of uh, hopefully many of that sort. So, Magfest is in its tenth year, Rockage in its first year, and uh, yeah, that's what Rockage will have. Oh, there's food trucks there also. We have these amazing food Always trucks good. coming to Rockage. Always good. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know that uh, one of our other VV Gaming players, uh, VV Asai, who actually won the World Cyber Games back with Guitar Hero yeah. 5, he will be actually coming out to Ho- San Jose. So uh, hey, definitely, yeah, man, that's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, I l- I look forward to Oh, yeah. They're, the family is just absolutely amazing. The, the Castillos, big shout out to them. They're wonderful, wonderful people. I don't want to jeopard, uh, well, not jeopardize, <laughs> monopolize. There we go. This conversation. Uh, Kurt, do you have a question? I think you do. I see, I see you typing away over here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got a few. Number, I mean, number one, just to talk a little bit about my background with that. I don't know a lot about Guitar Hero, so please don't uh, bludgeon me to death or anything with a guitar hero or <laughs> with a guitar or anything but um but i do honestly despite how much should i give jason i do really like watching it um i was a big fan believe it or not of and i'm not sure you know if you remember this or not but the wsvg uh when they uh with the world series of video games when they held, held their guitar hero tournaments um it was kind of gimmicky but it was also really really fun you know, uh, I was wondering if do you by chance remember any of those where they had sort of the the judge panels and they would have people go up and judge based on, you know, of course the the skill and then also the performance and stuff like that. Do you remember those at all? I, I remember hearing about the people being judged on their performance. I I'm, I I'm not familiar with the outcome, but I do know the uh, structure of it. The performance was uh, kind of cool. I like hearing about that too. Yeah, most definitely. Gotcha. Is there a chance that we might see some performance-based uh, antics anytime in the future with Guitar Hero? I mean, I'd love to see it. I think that's a side that uh, gets overshadowed by, like, you know, the, the technical side. I'd love to see more people uh, doing the <laughs> performance side of Guitar Hero. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of right now, it's open. It's your, it's your own sandbox here. If you want to, if people want to uh, start their own gaming tournaments or host their own events or even just I know some people like uh, Star Flayer has been doing some video ones where you can send in your video of your performance to her and she's giving away prizes and right. to hear if you've been encouraging that as well. So yeah, I'd love to see that come back. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I uh, mean, on, oh, go ahead, Kurt, sorry. Well, and then uh, just a few questions. You were talking about, you know, some you know people holding their own tournaments and things like that. I mean, you know, like you said, I, I think that's probably the best uh, way for things to grow is, you know, people hold their, holding their own tournaments. Um, is there, are you probably, are you like, is by chance, uh, you guys looking to put any money into, or any, not necessarily money, but just resources in general into possibly other smaller tournaments, local tournaments that are running, uh, Guitar Hero events, like for instance, Devastation runs our Guitar Hero events yearly, um, and some of the, I'm sure Jason could name 10 other ones, but that's the only one I know off the top of my head. Um, you know, are, are you looking to possibly put any resources behind that to actually, you know, help them out and help, you know, Guitar Hero sort of get uh, a little bit more, you know, press that way? I mean, I'd love to team up with uh, any of the just, you know, player-run tournaments or whoever is uh, building their own uh, festival event, whatever it may be. Uh, as far as 
money, uh, I don't know what sort of budget we have this year. That's not really my side of the, uh, of the, the brand, but I do know that I, uh, I'm totally willing to do stuff for Facebook and social media, Twitter, things like that, to, uh, to help hype up these events. So you guys just need to reach out and contact me via Twitter, which at Guitar Hero, as you guys know, or on the Facebook page. Most definitely. Perfect. Um, one other thing, actually, just so you know, um, as Kurt was just mentioning before, Devastation is run by a guy named Jedi Rob. I actually was just talking to him before this show even went on the air, and he had even said that he'd love to do some more with the Guitar Hero uh, brand in the future. So I'll have to pass along his contact information to you because that could actually be something really worth looking into. But uh, Jerry, I believe you had a question, so uh, let me throw the uh, mic on over your way. What's going on, buddy? Oh, thanks, yeah, Eric. I was going to ask, you know, um, a lot of fans of Rhythm Gaming, obviously it's been a little bit of a rocky road, and they've sort of been, you know, the the game informers and the sort of thing, you know, Rhythm Gaming is dead sort of thing. And uh, clearly uh, that's not the way uh, the hero brand uh, is looking when we look to the future. Can you talk a little bit about those changes and maybe what's prompted some of this? And I didn't want to call it a resurrection because... I'm not so sure it was ever quite as dead as it made out, but if you want to sort of give us a feel as to what happened and where the brand is headed. Uh, okay, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, from what I know and what I've been told, and I know that I don't get to... They, told, they only tell me so much because I would probably tell everybody. So <laughs> all I know is that uh, we are... The Guitar Hero brand was on hiatus uh, through 2011, and... I know that they're looking to work, they're working on something new, and I'm just collecting feedback from all the players in the community to see what they want in the, uh, the, uh, the Tar Hero game whenever that may be released. I don't have a release date or a title, but I know that uh, I'm currently just collecting feedback for that. And yeah, the Guitar Hero is definitely not dead. We're just, uh, just kind of just reloading and trying to see how we can uh, make the next one even better for everybody out there. I'd say so that I, answer is good. Mm -hmm. Happen and say if we were to do something where we uh, uh, maybe got out a little bit of a survey and talked to all of our Guitar Hero players and their competitors and compiled something for you about you know obviously it would be from the competitive perspective. Would that be of value to you? Oh, of course. I mean, like the Guitar Hero community is really strong, especially with the, on the competitive side. And if you guys were going to help me out like that doing surveys, it'd be a big boost to everybody. So thank you. And yes, please. Awesome. Okay, well, that's good to know. Jason, I'm sorry, guy. Do you take it from there? Oh, no, not a problem. Um, <laughs> that's actually really cool that you even suggested that, Jerry. Thank you. Um, Jerry just did a huge survey, actually, about competitive gaming. And uh, you should check out the results on our site sometime. It's actually really, really interesting. But uh, let's go over to the other side of things. Aside from just the competitive side of things, we've got the, the community side of things. There is, we mentioned it briefly earlier, uh, GHCOM that happens uh, like monthly I believe at this point where um, you team up with the hero feed and, and there's some really interesting things that you guys do could you talk a little bit about what that is and uh, share on the stream for us sure uh, GHCOM is uh, Guitar Hero Online Community Nights and uh, basically kind of stemmed from people saying that they never found enough people to play with online because everyone was uh, kind of logging on at different times so the hero feed uh, and uh, and we came up with the idea to have it just kind of a set time every month, and it uh, lasts for a whole weekend, 8 p.m. Eastern. On Fridays, we'd pick one weekend, and that'd be for Xbox players, and they just all log on, and uh, we play together. And we had a bunch of prizes we gave away. Everyone would just tweet with the GHCOM hashtag, and uh, it's been we've been doing it for five five months now. And the first one, I was actually at Brian from the Hero Feeds house. In, uh, in Pittsburgh, and we played together, and that was like kind of a great way to kick it off. I had never met him before, so I really like, uh, again, the social side of it and the online community has been pretty, pretty magnificent. So, yeah, thanks That's for mentioning really cool. that. I, I love it, and everyone knows to join into GHCOM every month. Yeah, most definitely. Really cool idea. Great way to get people on to play with one another. I know that one of the challenges for me wanting to play competitively online is finding a match nowadays because there aren't as many players yeah. online, uh, especially on the highest level. The people that really want to be able to play together don't really have as much of an opportunity to. Um, 
I do know that you had mentioned to me that you had possibly wanted to do um, an event in Orlando at some point. Uh, you had mentioned briefly that you wanted to do an event over in Chicago at some point as well. Uh, are there any other events that you might be able to give us any information on going forward? I mean, I have a, a calendar with a bunch of uh, <laughs> pencil marks all over it about uh, stuff I'd like to do. Uh, it's just a matter of what we can actually do in finding mm-hmm. a venue and just you know helping host it. But yeah, I'll be in... Uh, hopefully in Chicago for uh, C2E2. Um, it's like a Comic-Con pop culture event, and we're thinking about doing something kind of off-site, like an after-party with Guitar Hero uh, there. So that, that should be really fun. That's in April. But, um, yeah, maybe uh, you never know. It's, I mean, just trying to find, um, after, like, your surveys and everything and you know, from the community, we'll find maybe more people that are interested in hosting these events. And, uh, yeah, we're, you know, it's an open, it's an open uh, sandbox right now. <laughs> Well, Eric, that's good to hear. I mean, I live in Chicago, so it's good that you're going to be in the in the neighborhood. Ah. Maybe we'll get Jason to fly up here, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll convince you that we're worth giving an invite to an after hour party because you know we we don't want to turn something like that down. Of course, <laughs> should we be invited? Um, should be really fun. Uh, it, it sounds like it'd really be a good time. You know, I was going to ask you a question, kind of off topic, because a lot of our audience are young people who obviously are very passionate about gaming, and they often want to work uh, in, uh, in some capacity in gaming. And I thought I'd ask you, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about how you got, you know, sort of your road to becoming the sort of community manager, social media manager, pardon me, for, for the hero brand, if, if you don't mind sharing. And if you have any advice yeah, no. as well. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, play a lot of games. My first advice to anyone that wants to get into the video game industry, play games. That's, uh, that's the number one. I mean, a lot of you guys, no problem, but maybe some of your listeners that are, like, uh, just trying to maybe go a different route. It's just got to play games. you got to know your games. So that's the first part. I, uh, I did my internship with uh, Lynn PR a long time ago back in uh, San Francisco many years ago, and I worked uh, just, you know, the office assistant and very bottom ground floor answering phones, uh, and they were working on some stuff with Rockstar Games, games called, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, and things like that. Oh, of course. So I was, uh, of course, yeah. I was, just, I was basically just doing pre- like collecting press clips and answering phones there, and I just kept doing it, and uh, eventually I got, like I said, lucky, and here I am 12 years later doing the Guitar Hero social media, just helping out with them, so that's how I got into it. But yeah, play games. That's what I, my first advice, and then uh, you know go to those events like MAGFest and Rockage, that's where a lot of industry folk are, and PAX, and you know, PAX East and E3, if you can get into that, that'd be a great way to, great way to network. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, we had talked about this a little bit at MAGFest, and I want to definitely throw this out here on the stream as well. For some of the people that might be watching and haven't had the chance to play Guitar Hero, uh, you were kind enough to actually give me a couple games so that I could give them away here on the stream this week. Uh, for anybody that is watching right now that might want a couple of free games, um, all I want you to do if you do want one is uh, head on over to Facebook and like Guitar Hero over on Facebook, like VVV Gaming, and leave us a comment on the VVV Gaming page saying, hey, I saw these, I saw the stream, and uh, if you do, I'll send you a message and uh, I'll send one of these out to you. First three people to do it. We've got a copy of Band Hero on 360. We've got a copy of Van Halen here on 360. we also got a copy of Guitar Hero on Tour Modern Hits on DS if you want one of them. Just head on over to the Facebook page. It's uh, Facebook's for Guitar Hero. Like them first, because that's really important. Want to support them for giving us these to give away. Also, like us over on uh, Facebook, VVV Gaming. And uh, I'll send these out as soon as you can, as soon as I can uh, get over to the uh, post office and get them out to you. So uh, we appreciate you for listening. And, of course, we appreciate Eric for coming on the show. So, uh, Eric, before we do let you go, I don't know if uh, anybody else had any questions, but I wanted to make sure you had a chance to give any shout-outs. I really do appreciate you taking some time out of your trip here in Orlando to come on the show and share some information with us. Uh, did you want to give any shout-outs before you headed out? Oh, I mean, just everyone in the community, like, yeah, it's heads up, what's up, guys? Uh, we got the next GHCom happening on February 10, 11, and 12. You guys want to log on together at 8 p.m. Eastern each night. Friday is Xbox, Saturday is PS3, Sunday and we. Uh, and I do read everything on the Facebook page. You know, some people don't believe that uh, from other companies or whatnot. Yeah, no, I read everything. It's even like when you guys have 
a thousand comments. I read every single one of them. So that's a good way to connect with me. And Twitter is even easier, just at Guitar Hero. But uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me on the show. I uh, <laughs> I really uh, appreciate you guys doing this, even though I am like 10 minutes away from you guys right now in Orlando. <laughs> Yeah, no, Nay, you know what? Like I said before, I appreciate you taking the time out. You know, that's pretty cool spending some time here in Orlando and, you know, away from your normal job, I suppose. And, uh, you know, we appreciate it. We yeah, really do. J- J- Jason, I actually have a, I have a quick question before we let him go. And, sure. And first off, just, just to, you know, to you know, talk about you know just how you know, we, thankful we are that you came on. I mean, I hope you understand it. it it's you know, it's not that it, always easy, easy to get companies that have a huge following in the casual market to sort of you know be able to apply to this you know, somewhat niche market in competitive gaming and actually pay attention. So I'm I, we really appreciate you coming on and showing us some time. Um, I do have a last question though, and, and my question is kind of a weird one, but it tends to be with me. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose you know my thing is is you know we've run into some ran into some companies before, some gaming companies that are very very skeptical about the competitive gaming market. They are either skeptical, or they are to the point where they don't want to support it at all. They're to the point where it's it's a burden rather than a plus. Um, you know, for some markets, not I'm not saying Guitar Hero by any means, but what I'm saying is, is there any can you sense anything like that in Guitar Hero? Or is your company, is Guitar Hero, 100% behind uh, what, what competitive gaming wants to do with Guitar Hero? I mean, I can't comment for the entire company on that. I, I just know that yeah. you know, on the social side, I'm, I'm in 100%, and I'll help out you know, if you guys have your own tournaments and whatnot. Uh, I don't, you know, I, so I can't comment for everybody else. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I understand completely. No, I mean the social the yeah. social side's a big a big par- portion, and you know it's not you know you don't have to you know give a ton of money to support uh, competitive gaming. I mean, just just like you said, you know the social stuff helps a ton. So anyway, yeah. we do appreciate it, Eric. Jason, uh, I'll let yeah. you wrap it up. Buddy. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, to... I, I had a question, Jason. Oh. I got a question for you before you. Sure. This. I, I I'm playing this Guitar Hero at I'm at Quest Downtown Disney. They have five Guitar Hero machines here. Is that your <laughs> name? Are you top an expert on some of these? Is that your name that I'm seeing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you spent some time down here? Uh, dude, it's ten minutes down the road. I mean, I'm I'm like a guitar hero aholic. It's right there. Come on. <laughs> You're tearing it up in downtown Disney. Dude, I actually, uh, funny enough, right? Uh, this is going to be actually really uh, just a little side note, and I don't mean to bore the stream viewers with this, but the building right next door <laughs> to Disney Quest actually used to be yeah. a Virgin Mega Store, and I used to be in charge of their gaming department there, and that's actually where uh-huh. I got started running my own gaming tournaments, uh, and the very first tournaments I actually ever ran were Guitar Hero because I was so involved with. The, the game and the competitive scene um, that was what got it started and uh, yeah now of course that's gone in the retail space <laughs> but yeah that building right next to where Disney Quest is used to be uh, a place where Guitar Hero tournaments were held a couple years ago okay. well I do I think I see your name your name here on some of the high scores so there yeah. you go <laughs> but honestly, me, yeah, I definitely want to thank you one more time. And uh, as Kurt yeah, was saying, no just problem. as a little note to add on to that, I mean, it isn't necessarily just money that we need in the competitive scene as well. It really isn't. The fact that you have a brand where you have a Facebook with 7 million likes basically on there, that you have that yeah, reach that maybe, many people. Maybe next week we'll get 7 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's oh, close. 7 million. Oh, come on. It's like <laughs> 6.9. Okay, that's that's quite a bit. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the, I mean, the impact of you even putting a link on there – that's enough to help boost competitive gaming, you know? So we really appreciate you coming on. It, it Honestly, it's a great thing to have someone like you on the show. So yet again, thank you very much. We do appreciate you taking some time to join us tonight. Uh, yeah, you're, you're welcome, and thanks for having me. And, and uh, hello and goodbye to everybody else out there. That was, uh, <laughs> well, it was, it was a whole like round table you got there. Yeah, so, most definitely. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care, man. Take care, Eric. Enjoy your, enjoy your time. Thanks, everybody. Very cool. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye bye. That was awesome. Really glad he could join us tonight. That's yeah. That was actually probably one of the more interesting guests I feel like we've had in quite a while. I don't know if I'm just biased. Maybe you're biased. Ouch. You're very biased. <laughs> <laughs> you you are, you are very biased. But it was an inter- interesting interview too. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you can be biased and and, and still be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the fact that you know. You're right, he can't speak for the whole company, uh, which oh. is always sad. But he just texts me thanks. Aw. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, he seems like a very genuine guy that he just wants to support his game. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, of course, he works for the company, but he just wants to support, you know, whatever's best for the game. And, you know, mm-hmm. in the end, he might not be able to get us money, you know, get tournaments mm-hmm. money, but, you know, just just getting out, getting that out to all those casual gaming followers about a competitive gaming scene is mm-hmm. huge. You know, if, if every company did that, we you know, we'd be 10 times bigger than we are now. I agree. I agree 100%. And yeah, I, I think I think he's got also an infectious personality. You know, he's mm-hmm. really he's really upbeat, and I think that's that's what you want from a community manager, someone who uh, yep. who can you know politely answer a question, but clearly he feels like someone who's invested in other people having a good time with you know the product and the brand. And I think that's it. Just really, I look forward to sh- April in Chicago. I think it'll be good to to meet him and and see what they have going on at Comic Con. I think that'd be really cool. Yep. If you will have me, I'll be there, Jerry. Okay, you have a standing invite, so we'll see up here. Sounds good. Um, one other thing, one other note. I did just get one other text. I uh, I had Jason Barbosa, one of the people that's going to be doing the stream from Hypa Station, scheduled to appear on the show tonight. He just texted me that he will not be making it tonight, which is a little bit sad because that means one of our guests is going to be a little uh, is going to be cut from the show. I apologize for that for anybody that was looking forward to hearing from Hypa Station news. Uh, but we do have one more guest that we will be bringing on, and then after that we will have a little bit of a roundtable discussion on some Sopa Pipa news uh, and. Uh, I think we're going to go towards Lantastic Gaming right now, I believe. Let me see yeah. if I can get him into the call. And uh, I'm excited about that Guitar Hero thing, man. I'm all bouncy and happy, and I, I won't do that again. I, I mean, Oh, you're like Kurt with that's Counter-Strike information. News. <laughs> well, technically, well, you know, there was Counter-Strike News today, which we'll get to that. But so, um, t- technically, technically, there wasn't... Uh, you didn't know about that, that they had, were actually... I mean, 100% that they were working on a new game, right? Isn't that right? I mean, I remember you were telling me that they, you know, they had been denying they were working. Technically, on the game. he didn't say there was. He said eventually there would be. So there was still well, never an announcement. That's, that's but not dead. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say I'd say all things considered, that that was a really good interview to hear for rhythm gamers everywhere. Anybody that is invested in the competitive scene at all, that should be really good news. Yep. Yep. All right, let's move over towards our next guest. Uh, let's see if we can get him into the call. Um, Ryder, R- I just tried combining his name and his gamer tag. Look at me. Ryan Slider is going to be uh, joining us. Let's see if we can get him on into the call. Ryan, are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Look at that. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know that you're going to be doing an event very soon over at uh, a place that we love over in Chicago called Game Pazzo. Uh But before we get into that, tell everyone that's on the stream a little bit about you. Who are you? Tell us a little bit. Uh, well, for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm my name is I'm I'm more aptly known as Slider in the community. Um, I'm a pro gaming coach for Victory Without Sacrifice. Uh, a Call of Duty pro team. Uh, I have uh, been basically part of the gaming community since uh, 2006, uh, respectively. Um, I've became I recently became a promoter uh, of events in May of 2011 uh, when I uh, basically launched Lantastic Gaming. Well, Ryan, it's good to finally meet you, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about your upcoming event first at Game Pazzo. No problem. So for those who are in the Midwest, especially in the Chicago area, tell everyone what you've got going on, kind of how you decided on the location and uh, what you guys have planned for that event. Well, uh, before I get into that, let me explain a little bit about Lantastic structure so that um, when I do go in and answering that question, it makes a, a better sense. Uh, Lantastic's uh, business plan is to be basically is to offer gamers league-based play, sort of like what MLG does. Uh, except the difference between us and MLG is as we're a little bit of a lower scale and we've divided the United States up into four conferences. Um, and uh, those four conferences are Atlantic, Pacific, Great Lakes, and Southern. And within those conferences, we have one or two separate venues where we offer six to eight tournaments per conference. Now, the idea of that is to bring competitive gaming to the masses. Um, those that might actually not be able to travel to the MLG events just yet. Um, they don't necessarily have the funds to spend on a hotel or uh, on a flight. Uh, or their parents won't even let them fly to an event just yet. 
Um, but they can go to an event up the street within, or you know, maybe even in the neighboring city within their own backyard. And uh, GamePazo is a major uh, venue for the Great Lakes Conference, which is one of our largest demographics. Um, so basically, what's happening is, is we we contract. We, I contacted GamePazo, and I basically pitched them the idea. They loved it, and uh, we've been working ever since. Um, we've had we had an event December third, which was uh, mildly successful. Uh, we had um, we had several well known people from the MLG Pro community come out and play, um, and it, it's it's been a, it, it's been a it's been quite a ride so far. I mean, ga- the the folks over at GamePazo are are very uh, what's the best word I can use to describe it. They they work well with what I'm doing. Uh, they're excited about it. They're excited to see it succeed, uh, and they want to be a part of it. Um, so, th- not only because they're in my in my opinion, there are the um, in my opinion, they're the as far as the venue itself, they're the Taj Mahal of all gaming centers. I mean, if you've walked into this place and you've checked it out. You know what I'm talking about. This over 30,000 square feet of space dedicated to gaming and food and it's everything in the industry. It's absolutely amazing. And that's just from the pictures I've seen. I'm, I'm sure it's even greater uh, walking in the joint, which I've yet to have the pleasure of doing. But you will upcoming. So I want to talk a little bit then about this event. Now that everyone's aware that you have these four regions, um, what's the plan uh, what games are going to be there? What are you guys expecting? Well, um, we are basically going to follow one flagship game for now uh, until we get fully established. And that flagship game, of course, is the Call of Duty series. Um, right now, the course is the uh, the game in question is, is Call of Duty um, Modern Warfare 3. Um, now, what we've done is to address the lack of LAN issue um, is we actually hold the event over Xbox Live. Um, we've actually uh, we've actually gone into the venue and we basically set up uh, one or two gaming stations, whatever ones they assign to us, and we um, we open up the NAT and we make sure the settings are what they need to be. Um, very next day, people come in and sign. Basically, they bring their gamer tags on a flash drive uh, and they sign on the Xbox Live at wherever it is that they're sitting. And we can have the event over Xbox Live. Now, one of the coolest things that we can do that is we can have Mr. Holiday Doc, um, who's going to be shoutcasting and commentating the event uh, directly from his stream over Xbox Live. So we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to offer uh, you know um, the commentary that people are used to having when they watch um, big name events. Well, I don't want to. I know I don't want to monopolize the conversation. I'm going to say one more thing, and I'll pass it on to. I know others have questions, but um, that sounds like a very interesting model. I mean, it does solve some of the land problems by allowing them to uh, obviously log on to Xbox Live. Um, for those who don't know, how many events like this have you run in the past? Uh, Lantastic has about six events under its belt so far, from June of 2011 until this, till the last event on December 3rd. And I want to give you an opportunity to address some of the critics on Twitter who no said, you know, that there's sort of this issue with credibility and things like that. And I, I, I know what it's like when anybody attacks a VVV or any brand. Uh, so I just want to give you that opportunity to address that. Well, the only thing I'm going to address um, is that with any organization, whether it be a gaming organization or a company or, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, haters will hate. Um, and there's really nothing I can do about that. Now, I can choose to I can choose to fight every single one of them or I can let my company's uh, reputation and everything speak for itself, which is basically what I'm going to be doing. Um, now we did have a we did have a case recently of employee theft, which uh, did unpor- unfortunately affect the gamers uh, and myself pretty substantially. Um, it is being handled through legal channels. Um, that is all I'm going to say about that. But the gamers have been contacted and they have been compensated, and they have you know, uh, or they're being worked with, and 
the, the gamers that have been directly affected are very, very happy with the uh, arrangements that I've made with them uh, over the situation. So, uh, sure, I mean, rumors filter out. Um, and Twitter is not exactly the greatest place in the world to handle a dispute. So, um, yeah, we, we, I, try to, I try my absolute best to keep it off of Twitter. But basically, in no uncertain terms, I'm doing fine. Okay, um, so gamers, to be clear, just so that I want, because it's our job to sort of push through that. Right. There are players who still haven't been paid from previous events. Is that correct? Due to this theft, there there are two. There are several players, uh, at least three off the top of my head, that have not been paid as a direct result of the theft. Yes, but they are being handled. And you could obviously understand where somebody says, "Hey." If you start another event before you pay all those players, uh, is that going to be an issue? And that's where I can see some of the Well, I've the solved criticism. that issue. Um, I've solved that issue by uh, no longer uh, basically offering same-day payout events. It resolves that issue completely. Uh, what we do is we basically say, hey, you know, uh, I called up my attorney and I said, hey, what are the legal implications of me uh, offering same day payout at my events versus doing a payout over the mail. And he says absolutely none as long as I follow certain legal criteria, which I have done. I'm not going to go into all of that, but basically I've resolved that issue by offering same day payouts at the event. They go to the event, they have a good time, they place top three or top two, depending on the event. Uh, and we basically say, hey, here's your money. Um, before you get your money, you basically fill out a prize claim form. Um, that allows us to basically keep the paperwork on it, and the second form of paperwork they sign is basically is if you want to get your paycheck from your job, they make you sign for it before you leave the business with it. We make them sign for the money before they leave the venue. That way, if anything ever comes up, we basically say, hey, um, this person was paid, they signed for the money, have a nice day. Uh, and so, at, yeah. so at the upcoming event at Game Pazzo, all the players there will be paid that same day. Absolutely. And then that'll just leave the players from previous events that haven't been paid that you're currently working with. Absolutely. And that, that, would, that would take care of, of at least what some of the problems are. Absolutely. Interesting. All right, Kurt, well, do you want to take, take it over? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, and, I, I mean, uh, to be honest, I, I think anybody can appreciate what you're trying to do. Um, like like Jerry was talking about before, anybody that runs these tournaments, number one knows it's not easy. Okay, <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah. for sure. Um, I mean, I, you know, me and Jerry, we both run organizations, and you know, Jason and Asylum, of course, work for the organizations, and mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it, we definitely understand the, you know, the <laughs> the, the problems with that, um, and 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 doing a land event is probably even worse to an extent, just because it's such. A, uh, I guess, a, in it, for lack of better words, a clusterfuck there for <laughs> the yeah. actual few days of the event. So, yeah. but, but I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not here to judge. But um, you know, I am glad that, you, that's you, putting that's putting it mildly. <laughs> that's yeah, putting it no, very I, I, mildly. I, I understand completely. Um, yeah, I mean, so just to change the subject lightly a little bit about uh, uh, you know, we saw something about a. I was looking over the Twitter and I was doing a little research before the show, and it seems like you have. Uh, Possibly doing some kind of pro workshop kind of thing. Uh, you drop any hints on that? Do we, you know, are we well, uh, pro there are yet? there are some there. Actually, um, well, before I get into that, let me explain the the reason uh, that idea came about. Um, I hired a uh, marketing team um, to basically uh, help me expand Lantastic into the next level. Um, and basically, instead of sitting here going, dude, I, I hope I get 25 teams so I can pay out this amount of prize money. Man, that would be great. Um, I've gone ahead and hired uh, a husband and wife marketing team out of Las Vegas, Nevada, who basically did uh, the marketing for Boy Scouts of America. And these folks are used to generating revenue. And let me get this straight. Boy Scouts of America is a nonprofit organization, but it does cost to hold the conventions that they hold, which are gargantuan. And they, they raise the funds needed for those uh, functions to basically function. And we're talking about revenue in the hundreds of thousands and sometimes maybe even the millions of dollars. 
So when I come to them and I say, hey, you know, um, I'd like your guys' help in, you know, generating maybe 30000 30, maybe $60,000 for a conference so that we can offer five and $6,000 payout events, they look at me like I killed their kids. Um, because, <laughs> you know, that's such a small amount, um, and it's almost insulting to their talents. But, you know, they, you know once they listen to my ideas and once they've gone forward, they, they, they're actually excited to be a part of it. Now, now what we're doing is we're basically doing marketing for, that particular, for each particular conference so that we can uh, offer that kind of prize money. Uh, to, it doesn't matter whether an event shows up and five teams show up or 500 teams show up. We'll still be able to offer a five or $6,000 payout. Now, mind you, each each, each conference and each event, there there's six events in the series, so you can start to do the math, all right. So now, one of the ideas that this marketing team brought forward to me is, why don't you have people go to the venue and teach the gamers how to go pro? You know, why isn't there a market for? And, and granted, that's their ignorance. They don't, they don't know the, the, the esports world too well, but it is actually a common occurrence where a pro will go online and he will charge for his services in order to help you to give you pro tips, so to speak. So what we've done is uh, I've contacted a couple of MLG pros. I'm not going to mention them by name because uh, we have no contract or agreement with them yet, but I've contacted some MLG pros within the Chicago area and I've pitched the idea. Basically, what's going to happen is they're going to go into the venue, they're going to get paid a, a, spe a particular standard fee for their services, and they're basically going to teach uh, a pro workshop in a class setting. So people will go to the event, they will pay to be a part of this, uh, this pro workshop, and it's basically like the pro lounge at MLG. Unless you have wear a certain kind of wristband, you're not going to make it past the barrier. Um, those are the folks that basically go in and they learn what it the ins and outs, the call outs, the, the, the maps, I mean everything you need to know to move to the next level. This pro is going to help you do that. So gotcha. when do you see yourself having that first class? Because uh, Game Pass is a good place for I it. I, I see February 18th, which will be the next event at Game Pass. Gotcha. So you're going to try to secure those pros and then, then uh, yes. see if you can market and get people uh, locally interested to attend a class? Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. I am. I mean, uh, just like, it's just like I told the Guitar Hero guy right before, or not the, I hate to call him the Guitar Hero guy, <laughs> but Eric, right before, uh, you know, right before you got on, I mean, anybody that takes a casual gamer and tries to make them a non-casual gamer, make, tries to make them a competitive gamer, is, is doing the right thing, so... Good ideas, yep. good ideas. Um, now I want to get on to a new subject because this is a subject personally close to my heart because it's something that I absolutely love the idea of. I've loved the idea for many, many years. Um, that's one of the things I want to talk about. Let's talk about eSports Mag, e -sports mag I guess it's eSports Magazine um, that you're possibly doing as well. That's, that's a project of yours, correct? That's a, that's a project of, of mine, yes. Um, it is under the umbrella of Lantastic Gaming uh, with uh, so, uh, different staff members that are in charge of putting it together. Um, I have my editor, who uh, his name is Emil or Snow, uh, and he's located across the pond in London, London, England. And he's actually the man who actually puts the magazine together in a PDF format that uh, allows me to submit it to the publisher um, to get printed, uh, to uh, Jerry might have an issue in front of him at this very moment. Um, basically, basically turns it from a idea into a reality, something you can hold in your hand, turn the pages, read the articles. That's That's cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and I, I've always loved the idea. I'm, I'm not going to give you too much shit. I got to give you a little bit of shit because it, you, you do say it multiple times it's the very first esports publication. That's that's not even remotely true but, but I'm not going to give you too much shit about it <laughs> um, well I, I will say that uh, it may okay it may not be the first uh, but it's definitely it's it, I, don't, I don't I don't have any competition right now um, and, and that's one of the reasons I, and I did do my research on this and may, maybe I missed the fact that it's not the first magazine but I don't see uh, a magazine being published and circulated within the community no. like what we're doing. No, there, um, there is there isn't any right now. The 
the last one that was around was Godfrag Godfrag magazine with Beckett Media. So, no, no, it, Fair it, enough. there's not one around right now. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I like I said, I love the idea as long as you can put out some great content with it. You know, great publication. That's you know more power to you, buddy. But what um, so what what kind of content are you looking to include in the magazine? Like, I mean. Is there some kind of layout for it? I haven't personally seen one myself. Sure uh, I'm sure I'll be ordering. So what's you know what what, what kind of content are you uh, thinking about? And not only that, not only that, just what what games too? Is it going to okay. be Call of Duty exclusive? No, absolutely not. Um, the the object of esports is to be all encompassing with the um, the entire community. Um, we want to we want to focus not just on Call of Duty, but we want to focus on the games that in which the community is interested in stuff like starcraft uh call of duty of course is a big one uh halo um the the sections of the magazine will encompass four major four major areas um of esports um number one of course is call of duty number two is starcraft 2 uh number three is halo uh number four is actually deserto uh, which is not exactly a game but it's an actual rule set um, and we're, we're actually looking to help bridge the gap between the U.S. and the European uh, players by giving as much information about Deserto as humanly possible to the community. Um, a lot of people have heard uh, Deserto, but they don't know exactly what Deserto is. They, they couldn't, re- I mean, you, you, can find, you can pull a guy uh, out of the Twitter, the pro Twitter community, and ha- he can rattle off the rules of, for MLG variant in his sleep. But not all of them can do the same for for Deserto. Um, our section of the magazine, which is aptly called Deserto Corner, uh, is going to strive to do that. Uh, we have a staff writer for the Halo section. Uh, his name is um, Small. He's actually the uh, coach for the pro team Straight Rippin'. We've had uh, him on the show a... before, actually. Yeah. Yep. And he's, uh, if you've seen any of his work, he's one of the most amazing writers in the community. And he, we're, we're blessed to have him with on our staff um, to handle any article in relation to, to start, uh, excuse me, to Halo. Um, we had a, a, we had a dude uh, named Animal Hinchman, which is, I only know him by his um, Twitter name, but he wrote the StarCraft article. There you go. There's the copy of the mag right there. And, um... Yeah, so we basically we basically put. I went online and I, I talked to a few people and I pitched the idea and I said, hey, you know, um, why don't we do this? And everyone seemed to love the idea, and um, we've done it ever since. Um, basically, it's going to be six publications in a year, uh, so it's a bi-monthly publication. Um, right now, there is 32 pages in the magazine. Uh, first page will be including the cover of the magazine, but 32 pages total. Um, we're going to be increasing that uh, size of the magazine to 40, 50 pages for the March issue, uh, which will come out March 5th. Um, and then we'll just we'll start we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep getting a steady stream of magazines to the community so that uh, we can hopefully. Um, start gaining some subscriptions and we can start uh adding more and more content to this thing for people to enjoy good good i mean it's like i said i i, have, I absolutely love the idea i mean it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to work or that anybody that does it has to follow through to do it either because it's not exactly an easy project i'm sure you know that um no, but at the same time i love the idea so definitely more support there um, uh, you know, I know you said you, you mentioned on possibly adding some StarCraft content to it. Um, do you have yes. any, you know, anyone, I know we, you mentioned this a little bit before, but do you have anything in specific you want? Because the thing about StarCraft is there's more StarCraft content than, you know, uh, than Bibles in the U.S. right now. <laughs> I mean, we're there is focusing a, a lot of on, on the StarCraft side of things. We're, we're focusing more on interviews with the big folks. Um, gotcha. Our uh, staff writer, his name is uh, Crash, um, and he basically uh, he lives in the Toronto area where all of the big folks are, uh, Huck and uh, Day Nine and all those folks. Um, we're, we've we've actually spoken to Huck and, and Day Nine, um, and we're trying to see if we can arrange a time where we can sit down and actually interview these guys um, and have and basically get 
basically get a, a an informative informative article out um, from the perspective of of these uh, high level pros. Um, now, yeah, I mean, there there's so much content out there for StarCraft too, but Star StarCraft Star StarCraft content is. It, when it, from the pro community, whether it uh, whether it be about the game or whether it be about pro tips or something like that, it, it's actually it's pretty well received content. Um, we'll, we'll try our absolute best not to put something that's incredibly boring. Um, we do have criteria for putting something in a magazine. If if you can go to your local GameStop and you could pick up a, uh, a one of those little books about StarCraft and basically read about it, um, we're not going to put it in the magazine. It has to be something that it has to be a very interesting or a hot topic or something like that where you know we can basically say, hey, look, the community is going to enjoy reading this. And one of the biggest things that the community enjoys uh, reading is, you know, what do the pros have to say? You know, so for the March issue, we're going to try our absolute best to hash out that interview with Huck and uh, basically get uh, StarCraft II from his side of things, from his perspective. Gotcha. Yeah, and interviews like that aren't the easiest to get, but you guys also have a niche. You know, you guys are. You know, this is going to be going into print, so you know that that's that's at the very least good for you guys. So, but yeah. So I mean, I, I guess enough about the magazine. I wish you the best of luck with the magazine, buddy. I'm I'm sure I will be subscribing, um, but I'm also not your demographic. <laughs> yeah, I'm the nerd that subscribes to anything at all esports. So you're looking for the guys <laughs> that you know. You, you have to please a little bit more than I do, but <laughs> but um, it's but yeah, not, so a, a little, not a problem, little, man. I, I guess my last question for right now is you know just another question about Lantastic. So. I know you talking about you talked about the games and things like that. What's really your goal here, though? Like, what what is the overall goal for what you're trying to do? Are you trying to grow the individual community, the esports community, or are, you, or are you just trying to get to a point where you're building up to something bigger? Like, what what's the end point for you with this? Event, I want with Lantastic? I want I want Lantastic to be the next big thing. Um, I want to give. Uh, I do not want. And I've said this in the past uh, with various uh, topics. People go and say, you know, um, what makes you different than MLG? Well, I don't want to, first of all, I don't want to compete with MLG. Um, you guys had the man himself on the show before who will sit there and tell you straight up he's not interested in competing either. Um, he's, actually, uh, he, he's actually there to help companies like mine succeed. Um, I want to basically be the minor leagues. I want to be something that that player comes to and says, "Wow, is this what competitive gaming is?" You know, and then they hear about MLG and then they want to take that next step. You know, so I want ML I want Lantastic Gaming to be the next big thing. I want to I want to hear people bragging in a year from now uh, about having an MLG title and a Lantastic title. Um, I want to hear. I want to see Lantastic in people's gamer tags. I want to see I want to see people talking about us uh, as dude. I went to this Lantastic event and it, it was amazing, you know. And you know you should go. Yeah, you know, I want it to be the next big thing. I also want it to be an opportunity for gamers to compete in something different. Um, they only have, excuse me, they only have four to six MLG events in a particular season, um, but. You know, that's all they have. Well, okay, well, Lantastic, here you go. You can compete with us, and we'll give you more. And you can actually compete at our events and keep the skills sharp so that when you're ready, when you're playing with us in the off season, uh, and the MLG season rolls around, then, dude, you, you're, ready, you're ready to hit the MLG circuit. You're nice and fresh. You've been competing at all these events, and maybe there's not the same level of competition as MLG events, but you're not, you're not coming off of a cold year. So, you know, we want to be an alternative to gamers. We don't, we don't want to be, we don't want to be that company that says, you know what, um, we're going to wipe MLG off the map. Definitely not my goal and it's not my objective. Um, and I want to work with MLG. I want, to, I want MLG to, uh, to basically uh, work with us in a sense, hey, look, you go and compete at these Lantastic events. Learn what it's like to, to be a competitive gamer. Then, when you're ready to make the move, we're here. That's my goal. 
got you. Okay, well, Jerry, I think you got a few more questions, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple. I wanted to get a feel for your background, your age, and you know what what experience you bring to the table. For those who may not know what you've done before this, what's your sort of age and work experience and skill set? Um, well, um, I'm in my 30s. Uh, I'm not going to give my exact age because people tend to pounce on that. Um, I do have a university education. Uh, I have uh, I have degrees. I'm not going to go into what I exactly have, but um, my my experience in, in the gaming community is as simple as you know. I've, I'm a gamer. You know. Um, I've, but I I've am been interested involved. in your work experience. I mean, I really want to go through that. Where Where did you okay. go to school and stuff like that to bring it? Because I'm 41, and everybody who listens to this podcast show knows I'm 41. Mm-hmm. And okay. you know, I don't I don't think anybody here is going to have any kind of like age bias. So I'm just curious as to as to what your background is. If I were somebody who was going to partner with you and somebody said to me, Understood. hey, you know, who is this guy? It helps to be able to talk about who you are as a person. Okay. Um, my education background is uh, University of Texas at Austin and, um, and uh, Pepperdine University and uh, Western State School of Law in California. Um, basically, uh, Give me a give me a specific question. I'll answer them on a point by point basis. Let's let's do that because I'm I'm sure you mentioned three up. schools. So tell me about your experiences at those. What was your uh, sort of academic background? Epic academic background. Uh, University of Texas at Austin is uh, history, and uh, that's basically um, a subject that I'm very passionate about. Uh, that's basically what I do there. Uh, moved to California, uh, attended uh, Western, uh, attended Western State, um, and, uh, and Pepper, Pepperdine uh, didn't exactly go too well because you know it's uh, at the time I was a young and broke student, so living on grants and stuff like that. So uh, that basically didn't work out too well. So I ended up dropping out of that school and I went to Western State. Uh, as far as as far as my work background, uh, I, I did work in the legal field for a very long time. Uh, I got out of the legal field in about 2007, and I've been uh, I've been an at home dad. Uh, I've been working basically a bunch of stuff. Um, I you know it's 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 2006 when I got into the game when I got into the gaming world. Uh, things kind of shifted. Uh, I wanted to basically do. I basically wanted to. I you know I got went from being a gamer uh, into uh, being a pro coach for MLG teams. Um, that was that was always my goal. So I, I basically spent a lot of time and energy building up uh, the uh, the Victory Without Sacrifice organization uh, into making it a. Um, Pro community, so to speak. Um, I basically wanted to bring them forward and say, "Hey, look, let's go to the next level." I, I want. I was watching teams like uh, Straight Ripping and then Triggers Down and all those guys, and I wanted to basically say, "Hey, uh, I want to be like those guys, but I want to basically be uh, the the." That, that kind of team for Call of Duty. So I spent a lot of time and energy creating that for the Victory Without Sacrifice organization. Now, 2011, it became, hey, uh, it, it became, hey, look, look, you know, let's look into basically say, hey, what about this idea? And that actually came from my wife at the time. And she basically said, hey, you know, why don't you do this? You seem to enjoy it. Why don't you spend your time doing this kind of thing? So I launched Lantastic. I've been a promoter ever since. Um, Okay. Um, To get a feel about the eSports magazine a little bit more, too, um, where did that fit into what you're doing? Because sort of in the rest of the world, everybody's moving to digital and here you're bringing out a print product. Is there a reason that you decided to go print, even though the trend is to keep everything digital? Uh, we don't want to bring uh, we don't want to bring things digital because uh, the problem with digital is one person will buy it and he will share it with other people. 
Um, that is a problem that we've uh, ran into in the past when, we've, when we basically run the idea. Um, we want to create a print product first. We want to get established with that. Um, we want to basically say, hey, here's what we are and this is what we do. Something you can hold in your hands. You could take it into the bathroom and read it or you can read it while you're having dinner or you know, read it on a flight, whatever the case may be. Um, and you basically, yeah, I just want to keep it in print form for now because once we're established and we've created some revenue, so to speak, uh, we have a steady stream of subscribers, um, then we'll visit the idea of bringing the product digital um, because we'll be able to afford uh, to do so, for lack of a better term. Well, let me... Let me throw this out there because uh, you know I'm lucky enough to work in the magazine world for Chief Learning Officer Magazine, and we also do talent management and uh, another one called Diversity Executive. So one of my thoughts here is that you know as I guess when I think about your core demographic, let's say that I were part of that, um, you know I get all my all my news, my interviews, everything in almost real time. And when I think about a magazine, I, f I, I would find it challenging to make it relevant, meaning by the time the magazine comes out and, you know, it's published and people read it, uh, is there a pressure on maybe that the news is old and people already know all that or they've seen the interviews on other sites, stuff like that? Um, we've been lucky enough to really not have that problem. Um, the... The only thing I could ever, I, the only thing I could see possibly for that happening um, is when we host uh, the MLG events. Like in this case, we host it, we we covered uh, Providence, um, and by the time the magazine came out in February fifth, or not February fifth, excuse me, January fifth, um, the the news was a couple of months old. I mean, people knew who they were, but we basically covered, uh, we basically covered the the event from our perspective. Um, we do run into that situation, um, but thankfully we don't have too much competition in, within the industry. I do know that there's several digital uh, news agencies online and stuff that do cover and and post those uh, articles and stuff rather immediate, and that is a, that of course is a is a small disadvantage from being a publication versus a digital. Um, but you know we we think that having a, a magazine, a, something that people can hold in their hands and read about. Uh, stuff such as this, um, it, it, there's a significant market for it. Uh, we do want to bring things digital. Um, that's been something that's been discussed in staff meetings a lot. It, it comes up every meeting that we have. Um, but I, I just don't think that we are at the point um, in our production stage that we can production stage, excuse me, that we can afford to do that. Um, we want to basically have the magazine out generating revenue before we move into that well i definitely want to thank you for coming on the show this week uh slider we've had a lot of people in the chat talking about what you're doing and and i definitely think this esports magazine's a great idea more content of this nature is something that we do we need it we do need it um i'd like to see a digital magazine eventually me i mean hey i'd rather be able to carry it around on my phone or uh you know get it up on a tablet or something like that than be able to carry just around one print magazine but i understand the reason the revenue and things of that nature and, and sharing possibilities but i really hope you uh succeed i really do i wish you the best before you head like out to tonight note, i would like to note that i still own i think i'm the only person on the planet that still owns all six of the got frag tv magazine I mean, oh no! <laughs> or not Godfrag TV, but Godfrag Esports Magazine. I swear, uh, I think I'm the only person on the planet. I'm gonna have to see. If well, Scoots get us get a subscription, and you can own all six of ours. Oh, I hope I hope you last six. I hope you, last hope you, I hope you last have more six. than Godfrag did. Okay, hopefully you have more than six. But I wish you the best of luck. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to go ahead and. Uh, promote the uh the website for the uh folks that are listening uh for those of you that uh, want to learn more about lantastic gaming our website is lantasticgaming.net and to uh learn more about the magazine lantasticgaming.net forward slash esm uh you can go and you can order individual copies of the magazine or you can order a one-year subscription uh it's very simple and uh 
Uh, I hope to see you guys at our events. I uh, hope to see you guys reading our publications. Uh, we're definitely, there's a lot of people that work really, really hard to make these things a reality. Uh, regardless of what the haters say, uh, we're here for the community. Um, granted, the, the, the money is great. The money's, uh, don't get it twisted. I'm in it for a living, but uh, that's not the whole reason I'm in this thing. I want to provide the next big thing for the community, and we're, we're happy to provide it. Uh, and it, a lot of hard work goes into creating such things. So I, I do thank you guys for your time, and I do thank you for the opportunity uh, to come on here and explain who we are and what we do. And uh, look forward to talking to you guys again in the future. Um, yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely. For those that wanted to see on the stream, I actually did just throw up a picture of the cover of the esports magazine. So if you want, you definitely uh, should check that out. Um, and I, I do def- have one quick question. Ooh, actually. please, Asylum, Mister. Yeah. I can't get my video to work. Go ahead. I know. Mm. But uh, Slider, are you going to be a game pazo there? Come the uh, fantastic event. I will be. Um, I will be at the event on February 18th at Pazzo. Okay. Because I will, uh, I will probably be at both, to be completely honest. So yeah, I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a sit down with the owner because the owner is really interested in bringing Lantastic to the next level. So um, I'm definitely going to be there sitting down and talking to him. Um, can't really make it to this event, but definitely will be at the February 18th event. Sounds good. I look forward to talking with you. Okay. All right. Any other shout-outs before you head out, Slider? No, that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to my staff for, uh, you know, so basically, you know, helping me uh, shell this thing out. Uh, Snow and uh, Small and Crash and uh, VF, VWS VF, VFX, who's one of the most hardworking graphic designers that you guys will, will ever meet. Uh, basically, everything graphics in this magazine, he pumped it out himself. Uh, you know, we woke him up at two o'clock in the morning. Sometimes and says, "Dude, you got to you got to get this ad fixed because it's it needs it needs to get done." And the, the bless his heart, he gets up at two o'clock in the morning and pumps out a, an advert and everything. So I mean, it's it's really it's really really great. I I, I appreciate my staff and I thank for them for coming along with me for the ride. Uh, everyone in VWS and everyone um, in Lantastic Gaming organization, I, I thank you all for helping me, you know, make, bring this thing to the next level. And Triple V, thank you guys very much for the opportunity to have me on your show. Uh, it's truly an honor. Of course. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Slider. We appreciate it. Maybe we'll have you back on in the in the future to see how these events went. Definitely. Cool. Um, just just go ahead and um, you can hit me up anytime. I'm on Skype. You know my Twitter. Uh, just send me um, all, any questions you may have. I'll, I'll post them up as soon as I get them. Yes, most definitely. If anybody has any feedback for you, where can they hit you up on Twitter again? They can hit me personally up on Twitter at Team VWS Pro. Beautiful. Uh, and the official Lantastic Gaming uh, Twitter is at Lantastic360. Uh, go ahead and give us a follow, and they can have daily updates about anything Lantastic, whether it be the magazine or the uh, the uh, events themselves. the the Twitter for the um, the Twitter for the uh, magazine is at Esports Mag. Cool. Uh, they can go ahead and follow that, and they can get any uh, uh, up to date information about the um, about the magazine. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that information. We look forward to talking to you soon, man. No problem. Thank you, guys. Take care. Cool. So two great guests. Unfortunately, we won't be able to have that third like I was mentioning earlier, but uh, I'd say this has been a pretty eventful night. What do you guys think? Uh, Jerry, I'm curious on your opinion. Good so far. I mean, I think Ryan's, uh, we'll see how that turns out. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Most definitely. I try not to uh, ask too many hard questions. Uh, you know, I think that there's some challenges with that, but Mm-hmm. I mean, the events will speak for themselves, and the magazine will speak for themselves. Everybody starts somewhere, so we'll see how that goes. Definitely. Um, yeah, I won't, uh, and I would probably uh, uh, just to you know interject real quick. I, just as one shout out to him, um, you know, and I I didn't really want to tell him on stream, but I, you know I feel like we need to share it either way. Is uh, one thing I would do is uh, just constructive feedback is. I understand. It's like I told him. I understand how hard it is to run these events, on how to start, how hard it is to have people uh, look down upon you for something that you can't help or that you're just trying to fix and things like that. But I would advise not to get into this big war on his Twitter. 
Um, you know, I mean, it looks bad. It just looks really, really bad. And he seems like a great guy mm-hmm. with a, with good intentions. And getting into this, you know, big war on Twitter with everyone that's messaging you talking about problems is just not going to help your situation. So I, I do suggest, you know, just calming that down a little bit and you, you'll be fine, buddy. Yeah, yep, definitely. I do appreciate the fact that he is still going, trying to pay out the uh, the people that have not been paid. Uh, very reminiscent of something like what Jedi Rob is doing uh, since he had people back out on him for devastation that he wasn't able to pay out full payouts for some people. I mean, technically, I still haven't even gotten my payout from devastation, but he's explained it. He's been very upfront, um, transparent to the community on what's going on, and, and I did see some of that in Slider as well, so I appreciate that. That's pretty cool uh good to see that those people will be paid out in full eventually um kurt what is this picture you just sent me this is the best picture ever i honestly think this is probably not it's not that it's not it's not that smash brothers picture all right that i was talking about that for like an hour last week it's this picture this is the best picture ever uh, this was taken by Josh Angle, uh, over at the, uh, uh, probably butchering his last <laughs> name, over from MLG. And I got to say, I, I'm sure, I don't know if Sundance is listening, watching or listening right now. He, hopefully he'll see it eventually. But this, this picture embodies esports. That is this a picture sexy picture. Sundance. So I good sexy. This, I don't even know the guy. But this picture, I think, probably embodies Sundance. <laughs> he, on this left hand, this business side, he's got his, you know, he's got his blazer on. He's got his, you know, his, his collar popped a little bit. On the right side, he's just a big old kid with a lollipop. <laughs> lollipop, uh. lollipop. <laughs> I love it, Jerry. Please comment on this because this, you, you know, better than I do, man. This is great. You know, the one thing I love about Sundance, and you know, was something that Ryan said I thought was really odd, like. And I always want to, you know, want to do our job of educating us, you know, um, I don't want to compete with Major League Gaming. I don't want to destroy Major League Gaming, to which I think good because you can't. You know, you're not in that position. Uh, Major League Gaming has $42.5 million invested in it. Um, you know, it was an odd comparison. But they also have this guy. And this guy right here is, uh, he gets it. I mean, Sundance <laughs> has such an amazing story that, Um, you know, he's got this laid back personality that hides a deep business competitive side of himself. And I don't know, there's just something about that picture that, that, uh, really captures who he is as a person. Really, I'd have to say, I'm going to have to talk. I'm going to have to talk. I was just going to say that Josh Engel's talented because that is about a perfect picture. He is, Um, and he does, by the way, just to give a shout out to him, Josh Engel is, uh, he does these stuff. I just want to make sure I am right on this before I call it out, but I'm fairly sure I'm right. Him and his partner do uh, Boss Fight TV. I'm not sure if anybody's seen the, those videos, but they're really interesting videos. They sit down in front of a camera. Uh, they've got a nice little set going on there, um, and they do Boss Fight TV every week, which talks about all kinds of esports uh, events going on and uh, uh, events and results and all that good stuff. So you can check them out at, I think, twitter.com slash bossfighttv. Uh, is that right? Yeah, twitter.com slash bossfighttv and bossfight.tv. They do really amazing stuff. Uh, they supported the, you know, the, the SFI episode of last night. And, yeah, like, like Jerry said, he, you know, he does, also does the, uh, a bunch of the MLG photographs. And I'm going to have to ask him the, uh, the story behind this photo. Like, like number one... Where in the hell did Sundance get the lollipop? Number one, right, right off the bat. Where in the hell did Sunday in the middle of MLG, probably Providence, did did the hell did he get a lollipop? Number two, who is he looking at? <laughs> is he looking just at the lollipop, or is there something else he's looking at? Like is is some P other PR guy in the corner that he's looking at? Like this 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 picture is amazing. So, I mean, anyway. there's actually a story behind that that actually has to do with lollipops because Sundance always. <laughs> Tweets or bring something like lollipops or cookies or MLG snack cakes when they had those custom uh, snack cakes made. I mean, they're always doing something kind of cool, uh, somewhat corporate but cool. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, just a great picture. The look on his face, uh, you know, the way, you know, these weekends are extremely busy, running around doing nine million things. There's just a lot in that picture. The scruff, the, 
the outfit, both professional and, um, you know, I, I just think it's great to make a long story short. That, I just, uh, I love the fact I that we it. started this podcast tonight talking about all these future awesome things, and we're we're ending it talking about lollipops and sunshine. It's beautiful. You know, you know what's oh, great about this we're podcast? Not done yet. Actually, uh oh, you know, what? Well, what? We're not you know, done yet. We you know missed great Sopa Pipa. Oh yeah, we do have to talk about that. So I'm going to shut up. But we, uh, I do think it's great that we have. I do think it's great though that we have somebody from Boss Fight in the chat already. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like I that's that's love. how that's how quick this stuff works. You know, anyway. I, I think if we had a good name for this episode, it'd be Sopa Pipa and Lollipops. That's a great, uh, <laughs> like a great, great name. So <laughs> let shall me we get started, right? Let me get started. Say, go for it, man. I want to get everybody educated on what's going on with Sopa, which is the Stop Online Piracy Act. Um, and then there is the Protect Intellectual Property Act, which is PIPA. Um, so basically what makes this really interesting is it pits two very interesting communities against each other. This is Hollywood and the music industry versus Silicon Valley. That's what makes this so exciting, right? It's the first time in history that two people who are normally so well aligned are coming head to head. Basically, the problem with SOPA and the reason it's such a problem is because it wants to punish online sites that end up posting uh, copyright or you know, you know, intellectual property, uh, music, stuff like that on their site. Well, imagine Wikipedia, who probably has millions, millions of links on their site. All of a sudden, they could be liable for someone who puts on their site something that's copyright, copywritten or protected. Um, both laws are a little misunderstood, but at the end of the day, uh, people like MLG, VVV, um, you don't want to be in a situation where we're streaming a video of a game and all of a sudden we're being fined because we don't have the right to stream a clip on that game. Now, there's inside SOPA, there's a certain amount of like uh, money amount. So if you make over $5,000, then you know, you, you could be liable, stuff like that. But the main problem is that it's a bad fix to an important problem. Piracy is important. International oh, yeah. piracy is important. I have a deep love for the film industry. Everybody knows I'm a huge film fan. I am a deep, deep, deep supporter of what Hollywood does. But you know what? The people who end up getting hurt when piracy happens are not Tom Cruise. I always get pissed off when I hear somebody say, Tom Cruise, these big Hollywood big wigs. If you think for a minute Tom Cruise or producer of a movie is going to take a cut in their pay, you are sorely, sorely naive. The person who's going to get cut is the guy who is working the grunt jobs. That's going to be the production assistants, the the, the craft services, the, the people who come on, the carpenters, the, the people who set up. Those are the people who are going to get going to get feel the pinch. They're the ones who are going to get laid off. That's the problem with piracy. It cuts out the amount of money Hollywood is willing to spend on making a film. That's part of the problem. The second problem that we run into that's equally really, I think, important about this is that uh, the intention is good, but the way to fix it is not to, penal to penalize websites that have copywritten content on them. That's not the right way to do it. Um, you know, they even want to add things like making Google responsible because their search engine linked to such a site. Um, and then requiring uh, internet service providers to block access to such sites. It's too much. And to be honest, a majority of the copyright infringement at a big level is happening internationally. So we're talking about sites in Russia and China and overseas that are actually doing uh, the kind of piracy at the scale that is costing Hollywood millions of dollars. Um, the issue won't go away. And I think it's really important that we are aware, one, that we do need to do something important about protecting those people who create intellectual capital. Um, but at the same time, the right way to do it, uh, I don't think either one of these bills is a good idea. So what should you do? Why is this important? Um, these bills go to committee, um, and I don't want to give you a whole rundown of how our political system works, but uh, you know, the House Judiciary Committee last month held meetings on these, and uh, basically uh, it looks like 
uh, Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA, has been put on hold until February. Now, a lot of people in Silicon Valley, the ECA, they are right now sort of wanting to make sure that Congress understands that SOPA, as it's written right now, is not a good bill. No one is arguing, no one is arguing that piracy uh, is bad. Piracy is horrible. Um, some of you out there, you may pirate things. You may think it's cool. Um, you wouldn't think it's so cool if you were a guy who worked uh, as a carpenter on a film or a painter and uh, you're feeding your family. But again, that's one of the first world problems we have. Uh, we get to be condescending and irreverent to those people whose hard work allows us to enjoy some of the pastimes we do. Um, so now we have the other act that has not died, right, which is uh, PIPA, the Protect uh, IP Act. Um, the full thing is called Preventing Real Online Threats to Economic Creativity and Theft of Intellectual Property Act for those that care. Um, basically what this is about is it kind of goes hand in hand with SOPA and what it's trying to do is uh, talk about um, illegal copies, uh, uh, digital right management technology, the stuff that blocks it. So you know DRM for software? Let's say that somebody makes like a crack for that DRM. Um, that that was considered infringement, which is what this bill is all about, infringing on things. And the exact definition for infringement is where the problem comes in. It says it's facts or circumstance suggest, quote unquote, this site is used primarily as a means for engaging in, enabling, or facilitating the activities described, right? The problem is that it's vague, and again, it holds the websites accountable. So if enough people use... I don't know, Wikipedia, because one of their link leads to a clip from a film that everybody uses, technically they could be held, uh, they would be infringing on someone's intellectual property rights. So that's why, again, it's a good idea, but it has, a, it has problems. Um, there were, in this bill, and that's already been changed and shot down, they wanted to do like, uh, DNS blocking and automatic redirection. So really what Hollywood was looking for was as much power to prevent any kind of piracy. And once it was found, right, that immediately they would be able to shut it down. But for those who don't know, Eric Schmidt, who was the CEO of Google, uh, I think he said it best. He said these are overly simple solutions to complex problems. And that we have a lot of things to worry about to balance, including free speech. Um, and not every case where something is copywritten and shown is a necessarily uh, infringement. Plus, for those of us who stream video games, uh, we don't want to lose that ability. I mean, that's critical. I want to be able to share with you the guides we make, or uh, we want to be able to watch Wednesday Night StarCraft. We want to be able to watch, more importantly, Major League Gaming streaming an event or IPL. Mm -hmm. Or uh, anybody, Apex, streaming, that's critical. These bills threaten that. And they may not threaten it for, for a small uh, player, but for Major League Gaming, it's definitely a problem. I have something real so, quick to throw in. Um, and, right. and this is just something that's actually going to impact us even tomorrow. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there actually is going to be um, a blackout, a protest set for tomorrow, January 18th, about SOPA. Um, and quite a few websites are going completely dark tomorrow in protest of SOPA and PIPA. Uh, so tomorrow, if you try going on sites such as Reddit or Wikipedia, um, the Mozilla, any of the fail blog sites, uh, they're going to be dark. Um, it's honestly a very interesting way of, uh, of combating this, saying, hey – we don't want this to be like this permanently. Could you imagine if we, we lost these important websites that share this content? I personally, I know how much I use Wikipedia whenever I need to know some information. If I know, need to know something tomorrow and I'm not going to be able to get to it because they're blacked out, that's, that's going to be, that's gonna be kind of tough. Um, well, so, I think that's going to be more of a message to not only the general public, but people who are making... <laughs> Decisions on this legislation as well. Most definitely. As far as where we get our information and how we get it. If they can't get that because this bill passes, 
maybe it's the right message to send. What are your yep. thoughts, Jerry? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think that in a lot of ways, when you look at the level, you know, Google is going to have something on their search engine. So when you go to Google's homepage, they're going to talk exactly about why they're against it. You know, you know that um, Facebook has something planned. Wikipedia is going to be dark in two hours. That's going to go down. Um, you know, and all the big companies, Twitter, Yahoo, Amazon, AOL, Reddit, Mozilla, LinkedIn, eBay, PayPal, WordPress, Wikimedia, uh, all uh, MLG. have, uh, well, they're considering it. The ones we know that are already agreeing are all those cheeseburger sites, uh, Mohang, no, ML, MLG. ML, MLG agreed, no. Yeah, MLG is going down and uh, wow. boing boing, all those are definitely going to go down. So, I mean, I think, and people have asked, you know, will VV Gaming uh, take the site down? And in this case, you know, uh, I don't think we're a big enough player that it matters, to be fair. Um, I think what we're doing in this show right now by talking about it, um, I do hope our shout box will be used for people to come and talk about it. If you're over the age of 18, I cannot stress enough, go to the ECA website, right? The ECA is, you know, is there for us. It's our primary um, vehicle for political action related to video games. Again, the Entertainment Consumer Association, you guys all remember we had Hal Halpin on this show ECA has an entire kit and makes it really easy for you to reach out um, and uh, do the right thing. If you're 18 or older, even if you're not 18, contact your congressman. Yep. Uh, by the way, the ECA is also going to go down. And uh, if you go to the ECA website, they have, uh, they have, again, you just put in your zip code. It'll tell you who your congressmen are. And then you can go ahead and let them know why you oppose SOPA and why you oppose uh, PIPA. And again, um, I'm going to be I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say this to all of you. We just did that esports survey, and most of you spend 24 hours uh, a week or more playing video games. That's what you told us in that esports survey. Take the fucking 20 minutes and go fucking to the site. Do what you need to do, because if this bill passes. Right. If this bill passes and all of a sudden there's no major league gaming, all of a sudden we can't stream any uh, tournaments or anything like that. It gets harder. Apex goes away. The fighting game community goes away. There is no uh, streams for devastation or anything like that because we're not allowed. The question you'll have to ask yourself is what did you do while everyone else was encouraging you? Could you take the time to do that? Again, you can go to the ECA website, click on that. All you have to do is put in your zip code and it will allow you to reach the people you need to reach in Congress, sending them an email saying, look, you need to stop this, right? This is, this is so important, right, to so many people. I mean that. So important to so many people that if you can think about what it costs Wikipedia and advertising or what it costs some of these sites to just turn off for a day, that means it's such a threat that we have to turn it off, right? So for me, I've already contacted both my senators, Senator Dick Turbin, who I love my heart, and Senator Mark Kirk, although he's a Republican, he still represents me and let him know. And obviously my congressman, Dan Lipinski, has also heard from me. And I made the phone call. I didn't talk to any of them directly. You will get a staff aide who, you know, I just say, hey, I want Senator Durbin, I want Congressman Lipinski to vote no on SOPA and PIPA. I want to make sure that it's really important. What should happen in a week or two, I should get a letter back from them because I contacted them, and so should you. So again, I want to make it clear. You're on Twitter right now. Let people know, right? Let people know. I'm going to tweet from my account, my Twitter account, at Lord Jareth. I'm going to tweet out a link, and this link is where everybody needs to go. So if you're following me, VVV, or the Losers Bracket on Twitter, I'm going to set out a link, just take the time, right? Take the time, go to the ECA website and go ahead and let your congressmen and your senators know that you want them to vote no on both SOPA and PIPA. It's not that difficult. And again, it's the wrong solution to an important problem. Indeed. Online piracy is wrong. It costs people a lot of money and their livelihood. But holding websites accountable 
is not the way to solve this problem. And I want to see you all get involved and use the ECA. That's what they're there for. Yep, I just All retweeted right. that from the Losers Bracket Twitter as well. So you have two different locations you can go for that, Lord Jareth's page or the VVV Gaming Losers Bracket official Twitter, either one. Um, really hope you guys found this infor- in- informative. Uh, this is really important. This is a huge threat. And uh, I-, I personally would hate to see this go into law. So um, please do your part. Do your part. I think that everybody on this show is doing it. And uh, we'd love to see you join in as well. If you have any questions, you can contact any of us here on the show. We'd be glad to talk with you about it. Um, I just one quick. I got a question from someone that I, that I want to answer. Somebody asked, you know, <clears throat> why would Hollywood do this? Um, Hollywood isn't trying to be a bad guy. They have a job, and that is to protect what they do. I totally understand that they want the best, most draconic, and absolute shutdown of piracy. You can't fault them for that. And, you know, they feel like this whole, you know, from what I know about Hollywood, they feel that this blacking of sites is just a publicity stunt. Uh, But if you look at a former Senator Dodd, who now is the head of the Motion Picture Association, he is not upset that Obama won't support SOPA. And I think it's good Obama will not support this. Uh, but he, the, they are happy that we'll have a dialogue. So we, what we need to do is we need to shut these two bills down, and then we need to make sure that we're working with the motion picture industry to make sure that there is good, serious control to prevent piracy from happening. And honestly, if you pirate, I don't know. I, you know, I, Everybody gets what it is to be poor, but uh, I think that there are better ways to uh, not rip off the guy who paints the sets and make sure he can feed his family. All right. I'm down on my soapbox. All right. I think we are just about to the end of the show this week. And, uh, you know, I got to be honest. This is going to be me just going out there with a message. I am really glad the show went as well as it did this week. I had um, a big problem that happened where I actually lost my entire computer uh, last week after the show. I went to go play some Star Wars, and my entire hard drive crashed, and we lost everything. So, um, <laughs> so the fact that we haven't had any technical difficulties on only our second video show after this entire debacle this week, aside from Asylum and his uh, lack of video, I still think... uh, Yeah, I need to get a new webcam. I think I'm going to be picking one up this week. I don't know, LOL. I like that better. I think that's a good picture. I think that's a better picture for you personally. I'm going to leave that up there. Um, (laughs) I wish we we had time to bring back the Gumby picture. Go on. Uh, Play nice nice tonight. You know what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to have an actual camera shot set up with a really embarrassing picture of Asylum. So if his camera fails in the middle of the show, I'm just going to transfer over to that and I'll leave it there for the rest of the show. That way he's actually, (laughs) you know, inspired to make sure his equipment works. That'll be good. I don't know, LOL. I don't know. Um, you know what I do know, though? I do know that I am going to uh, give some shout-outs real quick before we end the show. Um, let's do all the normals. First, the VV Gaming sponsors, Steel Series, uh, Gamer Grub, Control Freak, MusicSkins.com, and, of course, a big shout-out to Power Glove. They supply the music that we use every single week here on the show. Uh, their X-Men theme is actually the theme song for our show. You should definitely go check it out. Amazing band. Uh, another big shout-out to everyone that's listening tonight the viva gaming community the competitive gaming community um any people in the casual community that are tuning in uh, maybe possibly from the guitar hero world or uh, anybody that's just wanting to check out the show we really do appreciate you tuning in and listening uh thank you so much we definitely would love to hear your feedback and support uh you can get at us you can send us that information by getting at us on twitter if you look at the entire show, we've had our Twitter names up on the screen. Mine's at VV Paradise Asylum. I don't know, LOL. Um, at VV underscore Asylum. Kurt below me. We've got E-N-E Key Hunt on Twitter. And then Jerry at Lord Jareth. Any of us, you can tweet your feedback directly to us. We will respond, and we appreciate it. Um, additionally, you can find all of our episodes over on YouTube. The account is VVVV Gaming. Definitely subscribe to us there. Um, 
any uh, feedback also that you uh, want, you can send to the channel there, post in the comment. Uh, you can email us feedback at the losers bracket at vvv gamingcom You can um, you can also find our shows over on iTunes. Just search for VVV Gaming. There's a lot of ways you can get in contact with us. If you want to send me any personal email, paradise at vvv gamingcom um, Other shout outs before I end up passing it over to this guy over here if you want to call him that uh big shout out to guitar hero er- uh eric 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 again uh really glad that he came on the show um fingers crossed if all goes well i'd like to see if i can uh, help them run maybe an event in the future one of these tournaments that would be uh, a, a real big dream i guess you could say of mine since i've been so enveloped in the competitive guitar hero community so shout out to him for coming on the show i greatly appreciate it and i know the rest of the competitive guitar hero scene does as well um And then all you listeners that tune in every single week, I've been trying to get back to you guys doing the giveaways. I will be checking Facebook to see who answered so I can send out some free games. And uh, I'm going to continue sending out some swag. So if you guys could do your part, I'm going to keep giving out swag weekly, at least for the next couple weeks. Um, As long as you guys can keep doing your part and getting us viewers and uh, sending out tweets, putting on Facebook that we're live. Because, hey, that's my way of showing appreciation back to you guys. So thank you all so much. Uh, Let me pass it over to this guy, Asylum. Take it away, sir. You know, the one thing we I forgot to touch on while we were talking about League of Legends <laughs> was the tournament that was just announced today, put on by VVV Gaming. But I'll do that in a future episode. So, if you are interested, head over to our forums to League of Legends section. All the info's there. But, again, thank you to you, the viewers, especially those of you that come out every week. Uh, Biscuit, Arcane, Tilter, Glory D. You all are the reason... Are, well part of the reason why i do this show every week and it's just awesome to have you guys fill our chat with awesome things not just about us but about our guests and what we're talking about and your support is just absolutely amazing thank you guys for coming and watching the show and uh also vix and i saw you in chat tonight so uh i look forward to seeing you at your interview later this week and uh, again, a big thank you to you, Paradise, for putting on an amazing show every week. You're thank amazing. You. Oh, you're yeah. amazing. I want to see your pretty face, though. I wish you could fix that. I know. That. I'll work on getting a new <laughs> webcam, I promise. And we'll work on getting Jerry and Kurt theirs, too. I agree. Uh, I'd like to see them eventually. And then also, sorry, one last shout-out. I do want to give a big shout-out to Brandon, VVV Zodiac, in a approximately one week he is leaving for basic training for the air force to go serve our country so a big shout out to you good luck at boot and uh may the force be with you kurt uh yeah so i mean i, th- I think we had a pretty good show uh, uh just final shout outs here i suppose number one i want to give a shout out to esfi for having me and jerry on for the uh call Duty podcast show that they did uh yes last night yesterday uh, I know we didn't you know, mention much about that, but for those that did not see that, it was very, very interesting. It was me, myself, Jerry, um, Sir Scoots, and it was hosted by Ensign Sundance as well. And it was hosted by uh, ESFI, the great people over at ESFI. Uh, ESFI. It was hosted by a girl. So, uh, oh, oh, I know you guys are going to go check it out now. So I instantly gained at least 30 viewers on that. But, um, yeah, so go, go check that out. It's at ESFI.com slash COD. Uh, and it'll be on the right hand side there. Um, I, uh, I would also like to thank you. Know, give a shout out to the regulars. You know all my boys at Check Six Gaming. You can follow us over at Check Six Gaming. That's Check Number Six Gaming. Um, and we'll be trying to give you as many updates as we can. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for next week. Uh, um, the guy that messaged me on Twitter just a few moments ago saying how he was disappointed we didn't mention Moon Moon getting picked up by Fanatic Fanatic. Fuck you! You already knew it, apparently. So, <laughs> you know, you, we, you obviously just wanted to mess with me. So, fuck you. But um, that's okay. That's okay. You, uh, for those that don't know, Fnatic picked up Moon. Next word. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. you could have gotten that. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Go to Team Liquid. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. All right. On to you, Jerry. Wow. Such anger and violence. Speaking of which, Jerry. Boop. Your turn. Wow. You had to flip that in there. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, thanks to SFI for last night. I appreciate that. It was good to have Sundance, Scott, Kurt all on the show. I mean, it's good to talk to the Call of Duty community where I see a lot of potential and where I'm very optimistic that something good can happen. 
but at the same time, as Sundance said, they have a lot of work to do. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be critical of that community. Uh, hopefully someone there will listen and they'll start growing next week. Um, we're going to talk to Kim Rom, who recently, for those of you who don't know, uh, I mean, it's really important to, to kind of put this, uh, in perspective. Kim Rom recently put up a blog, um, because the steel series, uh, released grubby and, uh, there were some nasty tweets about it, and uh, Kim Rom, uh, I think, I think took it a little bit personally, in a good way, and uh, he wrote a quick blog about it. And uh, you know, on spons- uh, not sponsoring someone. You know, we talk a lot about sponsoring people, and he wrote a quick blog about not sponsoring someone. So I think at the end of the day, uh, for those of you who don't know Kim Rom, next week you'll meet. I think uh, just one of those. Uh, characters and personalities in competitive gaming that makes uh makes it just an exciting and wonderful place he's uh he's been a partner with us for three years and uh i look forward to to you getting to know what makes him charismatic and fun to be around and uh just a great person so i look forward to that and all of you thank you again for your time uh again next week i'm sure that as the season starts heating up there's going to be a lot more news to cover and maybe a rant or two or something will piss me off and hopefully i'll have some stones to throw well i think that just about wraps it up guys once again thank you so much for tuning in this week and we will see you right back here again uh next week same time as always tuesday night 9 p.m eastern and uh we look forward to seeing you then Thank you all so much, and I look forward to uh, having Kim Rom on the show next week. Until then, take care, guys. Send us some feedback. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.